Hey, it's Nathan, and today I am, you know, it's a chalk video. It's been a very long time since I've done one of these, uh, but a lot of my older videos on this channel are all based in proof-based mathematics, and I haven't done really any of the basics behind any of that at all, and there is like maybe one lecture series on YouTube that I found that goes into detail about the fundamentals of proof-based mathematics and just like... Where do you start when you start talking about mathematical structures and mathematical structuralism? So I wanted to sort of start doing that with this video and see how it goes and maybe continue that on. Uh, so to get started, I guess the idea is that you want to prove things. You want to prove stuff uh, and you want to do it in a mathematical way. What does that mean? So for example, if you have a statement like this one from Measure Theoretic Dynamics, uh, how do you prove that thing? Uh, and, well, you would write a proof, but in order to write a proof, you need to understand how do statements actually interact with each other. And this brings us to the idea of propositional calculus. So, just to define what we're working with, what are the propositions on which we are doing some form of calculation? Uh, a proposition is some statement that is true or false, but not both simultaneously. Right? So for example, I run this YouTube channel, whereas if you're asking someone a question, that would not be a statement. And so even though you can go ahead and look through languages and look at sentences and, and questions and comments and whatever linguistic construction you have and address them as being propositions or not propositions, in general, when we're studying propositional calculus, we do this in the abstract because we want to talk about all propositions at the same time in some sense. So throughout the remainder of this video, instead of using English sentences to form my examples, I'm just going to use symbolic statements, which are usually, or at least with the notation of which I'm following, starts with P, Q, R, S, and so forth. Like with anything in math, you define an object. If you want to be able to do stuff with that object, um, we should have some operations that we use on those objects. And this gets to the idea of what are logical connectives. And so there are a few basic examples of logical connectives. Uh, these are the, like the five primary ones that are usually brought up when uh, you're introduced to logical connectives and propositional calculus for the first time. However, there are other ones out there, and I'll put some stuff at the end if you're interested in looking at more of them as well, and there will also be stuff in the description down below. So by definition, if you have two propositions, P and Q, uh, then one, the conjunction of P and Q is the statement P wedge Q, uh, which is read as P and Q. Uh, two, the disjunction of P and Q is the statement P, and I'm going to call this a join uh, Q or PVQ, and that's read as P or Q. Uh, three, the classic negation, so the negation of a statement P is the statement this bar P, or like negative P, however you want to write it, and it's just read as not P. For the conditional formed from P and Q is the statement P implies arrow Q, uh, which is read as if P then Q. Uh, sometimes the arrow isn't double barred. Uh, and then lastly, five, the biconditional formed from P and Q is the statement P double arrow Q. And that's read as P if and only if Q. So each of these logical connectives take in the truth values of the given propositions that you're working with and spit out a true or false depending on what you started with. And when we're evaluating truth of more complicated statements based on the truth of other propositions, we use truth tables, at least in the beginning. When you're starting to learn about this, you, you use truth tables. So for the five operations that are defined above linguistically, um, there are these five truth tables that I've created on the board down below. Some things to note is that one, um, a conjunction is only true if both components of the conjunction are true while as the disjunction or the or statement 
is true if at least one of the component statements is true. This is a little bit different than how sometimes or is construed in English because sometimes or will be exclusive but not deliberately exclusive, if that makes sense. Like you can either go to your room or eat dinner or something like that, right? Uh, where in math, or is considered to be inclusive unless stated otherwise. The not operation just flips truth values as you would expect. And then uh, you have the conditional and biconditional truth tables. The conditional is a little bit weird um, because, and people when they first learn this usually have some issues with this, but in the last two rows of the truth table for the conditional, you have false imply, uh, implying true being true, or if false then true being true, and if false then false also being true. These two instances of truth are called the vacuous truths of a conditional or just vacuous truth. And so the idea here is that you can say a true statement as long as you're, you assume something that is false. Uh, so, right, th these are your statements of like, if pigs fly, then we can go and do X, Y, Z or like stuff like that. So they're a little bit weird to think about sometimes. They do come up in mathematics. There are instances where you're proving something and part of the argument of the proof is that, oh, this part of the statement is vacuously so, or this part of the argument is vacuously so, and then you continue on from there. So it is a relevant thing, um, but just wanted to point that one out. In mathematics, at least when you're proving things, usually you're looking at conditionals and biconditionals between other compound statements that have been connected using other logical connectives. So understanding the conditional and biconditional logical connectives, at least for being able to prove things in mathematics, is pretty important. So now that we have a few operations that interact with propositions and we can start doing some uh, mathematics with, or at least computational mathematics with these operations, we can start to think about more structural questions about propositions. The first one and the usual one that you look at in mathematics when you're studying a new object is the notion of what it means to be equivalent. This motivates the idea behind what it means to be logically equivalent. So by definition, suppose A and B are propositions formed from a collection of propositions PI, which are indexed by I, joined by logical connectives in some way. Then A and B are said to be logically equivalent, or A is congruent to B, if A and B have the same truth value for all assignments of the truth values of the PIs. So to give an example of this and also to go back to the importance of the conditional, uh, the first proposition that I'll do in this series of videos is that uh, P implies Q is logically equivalent to its contrapositive, which is not Q implies not P. This proposition and the proof of which is just a computation, essentially. So uh, when we prove things about logical equivalence between symbolic statements like P implies Q and not Q implies not P, what we can do is we can go ahead and just form the truth table that corresponds to both statements and see if the truth tables match. Whenever P is true, Q can either be true or false, and whenever P is false, Q can be true or false. So there are four total assignments possible for the propositions P and Q in the statement P implies Q and slash or not Q implies not P. And then we can just build up in complexity of our statements. So not P just flips the truth values in the P column. Not Q just flips the truth values in the Q column. P implies Q again is one of your basic truth tables. And then not Q implies not P is where we use the definition of what a conditional is and the columns for not Q and not P in order to calculate what that truth table should be. So not Q is what we call the hypothesis of the conditional and not P is the conclusion or the consequent in some cases. And in this case, in the first row and in the third row, not Q is false. So by definition of conditional and the truth table, for conditional, those two would be the instances of vacuous truth for the conditional not Q implies not P. In the last row, we have both not P and not Q being true. So that would be true in the conditional column. And then lastly, in the second row, we have that not Q is true and not P is false, which 
from the truth table definition of conditional gives you a false. So to complete the proof, we just recognize that the column for P implies Q and not Q implies not P are exactly the same. And therefore, by definition, they are logically equivalent to each other. So another thing that's important to point out about conditionals, that if you have a conditional statement P implies Q, the not Q implies not P is called the contrapositive statement. Uh, and it's formed by successfully taking the inverse and the converse of the original conditional in any order. So what that looks like pictorially is that you have P implies Q, and then you can do the inverse to get not P implies not Q, which is what the inverse is defined to be, even though I'm not going to write it formally on the board. Uh, and then similar for the converse, if you then take the converse of that statement, um, that's going to flip the not P and the not Q. So you'll get not Q implies not P. And so again, converse here, by definition, just flips the hypothesis and the conclusion of your conditional, even though I'm not going to write it formally on the board. And so when you do both of those operations successively, you end up doing the contrapositive operation in total to the conditional. So the last topic I want to go over in this particular video is that of tautologies, contradictions, and arguments. Because if you want to prove something, you have to be able to make a valid argument. So what does that mean? Well, first off, tautologies and contradictions are special types of propositions. So by definition, let A be a proposition formed from the propositions pi indexed by i connected by logical connectives. Then one, a is a tautology if a is true for all assignments of truth values of the pi's. And two, a is a contradiction if a is false for all assignments of the truth values of the pi's. The reason that you define these things is because you want to talk about valid arguments. So by definition, if we let a1 through an be propositions formed from propositions pi indexed by i connected by logical connectives, then we say that b is a valid consequence of a1 through an, or that a1 through an form a valid argument for b, if for every assignment of truth values that make a1 through an true, b is then also true. And so although this definition is elementary when it comes to logic and logical arguments, there is a more mathematically structured way of presenting it, and that's the content of this next proposition. So B is going to be a valid consequence of A1 through AN, if and only if, whenever we go through and AND together all of the A's, and then imply B, that symbolic statement will be a tautology. So the proof of this is just using some definitions and some ideas of what we've already talked about in this video. Uh, one direction is quick, um, but I'll do the harder direction first. So going forward, assuming that B is a valid consequence of the A1 through the ANs. Well, if B is a valid consequence of the A1 through ANs, then whenever A1 through AN are true, B is also true, which means that the conditional formed by anding together all of the A's and implying B is true whenever the A1 through the AN's is true. And then the other thing to look at is, well, what if one of the AI's is false? And so if one of the AI's is false, then the anded statement by definition of what it means to and together two propositions would be false. And so in that conditional, we would have a example of vacuous truth. So in all cases, the anded together A's conditional or implying B is a tautological symbolic statement. And therefore, the first direction is proved. In the reverse direction, this is just very quick. So if your Frankenstein conditional of anding together all of the A's and implying B is true all the time, right? It's a tautology then it's also true in the case when all of the AIs are true. Uh, and so that means that when all of the AIs are true and you imply uh, B must also then be true, which then completes the proof of that proposition. Um, the idea here is to make this a series. And so I would like to leave you with some exercises. The best way to learn how to do math or to get better at math is to do more problems. And the best way to do more problems is to just find problems to do. And sometimes that can be hard, especially when you get into more abstract math or when you get into proof-based mathematics. And if you've 
only known computational stuff and calculus your entire life, which was my case when I was in high school and before I got to college, um, it's kind of hard to push beyond that boundary, or it can be. Um, at least it was hard for me. So um, at the end of these videos, I'm going to go ahead and list some exercises that you can try, and I'll also post, I think I'll post some solutions to those depending on, depending on if I find them interesting or not. So um, yeah, but otherwise, this is essentially the end of the video. So if you're not interested in the exercises, cool, they'll be at the end, end of the video. Um, but if you enjoyed this video and or if you're, if you have thoughts or if you want to answer some of the exercises, you can go ahead and comment down below. As always, my name is Nathan. Exercises will be coming up in a second. This one was chalk, which hasn't happened in a while. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more mathematics videos. I also talk about my PhD experience on here and how I'm doing as a human. Uh, so if you're interested more in like, who the heck is that guy? Um, that exists on this channel as well. So anyway, I will see you next time.